All right, welcome back, everybody, to Let's Talk About Sleep, the channel where we talk about sleep. So, just as I said in part one of this um, this month's Q and A, uh, my my new book will be coming out um, either early early next year or later this this year. This year being December, so one month left to go. <laughs> um, I, as soon as I know, I will let you guys know. Uh, it'll be up on Amazon, just like uh, Let's Talk About Sleep is. If you're interested in that book, you can still get that um, on Amazon. The link is in the description box down below. Uh, thank you for everybody in the last month who, who participated and interacted with uh, comments and questions. Like I said, I read them all and try to um, you know explain them as much as best I can. So uh, with that being said, these videos are for education only. And with that, let's get right into it. So in the last video, I kind of teased um, that uh, somebody had, or there was a lot of questions on sexomnia. So I'm going to get right into that, and uh, we'll go from there. So on, uh, on my sexomnia video, Bake Ag writes, doing it for one year or longer and just found out what it is called today. Crazy. My girlfriend knows and has no problem with it, but it is crazy anyways. Yeah, I mean, you know, as we'll see in the next couple comments, um, first of all, thank you for, for bringing that up. Yeah, it's it's oftentimes something where people are kind of embarrassed to talk about, you know, either, either the bed partner is embarrassed to tell the, the, the patient themselves, the patient is embarrassed to tell the doctor, you know, or other family members, and as a result of it, it gets kind of pushed under the rug. My guess is probably it's a lot more popular or a lot more common than people realize because how many people are, you know, going to a doctor saying I'm, I'm doing these activities in sleep, right? But I do want to make one thing clear here, right? This is not, um, you know, the, 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 the sexual actions that people do throughout the night with sexomnia is not based in, um, you know, some, some conscious desires or, or, you know, things of that nature. This is simply a, a, a completely automatic phenomenon. It has nothing to do with things that were, or, or desires that have not been acted out in real life. So, you know, it's important to know that. All right. Um, Veer writes on sexomnia. Now I got the answer to my question that why the hell I always masturbate and sleep. It shows something that I can't explain. Same thing as I was saying with Big Ag, right? It's it's these are not necessarily desires like you know pushed under the rug that are coming out in sleep. These are kind of just automatic behaviors. Okay, it's kind of like sleepwalking. Uh, since the last few weeks, every morning I woke up with some blurry memories of what I did last night. Don't know how to get out of it. Something makes me feel worse every day in the morning. Yeah. So again, along with the fact that these are not you know, some subconscious desires, it's also not a character flaw in your case. What I would say is anybody who feels, oh, this is very disruptive to me, go get a sleep evaluation, okay? Get a sleep test at minimum to find out if there's something triggering this, okay? Sleep apnea, you know, I always talk about that. That can be a trigger for a lot of things like sleepwalking, which sexomnia is part of that category, okay? Dom writes, um, I'm having the disorder is ruining my having sexomnia is ruining my relationship and I need help. Same thing, Dom. Um, one is I would say tell your bed partner what I'm telling you right now, which is this is not some you know uh, pent up uh, aggression or desires or anything like that. This is a strictly automatic phenomenon and has nothing to do with character flaw or anything like that. But what I would say though, if it's if it's ruining your life, ruining relationships. You want to get it looked into, okay? And MT writes, I hate myself for this. MT, same thing. I'm going to say it the same way as I said to Dom. You know, this is not nothing to do with your character, your spirit, nothing like that. But you do want to get it looked into, okay? Because if there's something triggering it and you mitigate that, that can reduce the amount that or the, the often the frequency that, um, that sexomnia can happen, okay? Thank you guys for contributing. On my uh, Bruxism video, which published recently, again, that's teeth grinding, Amit writes, do most people usually get refreshed sleep and feel the next day with Zulpidem in your experience? Uh, sure. I mean, so, yeah, that's not really 
um, bruxism, but it's a good question. What what they're asking about is Ambien, right, or Zolpidem. And the, the issue is, do you feel refreshed the next day? Depends, right? There are some, every medication uh, leads to different results for everybody, right? So on this, on this channel, I talk a lot about what? Melatonin and trazodone, right? To completely separate um, types of substances to help people sleep. Some people absolutely do great with them and love them and feel wake up, feel completely refreshed in the morning, wake up easily. Other people say this is the worst hangover I've ever felt in my life and I can't function the next day. Ambien or Zolpidem is the same thing, right? So IR or the immediate release, that's going to just help you to fall asleep. The CR or um, XR, however they want to call it, uh, that, that's going to help you to stay asleep as well. Typically, the CR types of medications have a higher chance of leaving you a little bit more hungover the next day, but it's not a guarantee. So my answer to your question is, it depends, right? If there's other things going on in sleep, again, like sleep apnea, Zolpidem is not necessarily going to help that. You know, you may sleep through it, but that's going to maybe possibly leave you feeling more hungover the next day. So you want to look into that. But I think there are safer things, safer things long term to take besides Ambien. So talk to your prescriber. And then Albert on the Brooks's video writes, Promasom. P-R-O-M-S-O-S-S, P-R-O-M-O-S-M. -S -S. Not sure what that means. If anybody knows what that means, or Albert, if you know what that means, let me know. Um, yeah, so, so, so you know, to, to kind of sum this all up, you know, in both cases, right, sex omni on the question of grinding or use of Ambien, you know, you always want to say, err on the side of, could there be something else triggering what's going on here? And if that's the case, get an evaluation, get a sleep test at minimum. You know, you can do a home test even and find out what's going on, okay? And with the sexomnia folks, this is not a character flaw, so don't hate yourself for this, okay? But you do want to get it looked into. And that is the video for today. So thank you for everybody who interacted, all the good comments and questions. Keep them coming. Once a month, I'll do a video like this or videos like this. Um... We're really getting close to 1,000 subscribers. Once we get there, somebody will get a signed copy of Let's Talk About Sleep. So until next time, everybody, sleep well.